It's time to talk about the last two episodes in season one of Interview with a Vampire. Episode six, Like Angels Put in Hell by God, and episode seven, The Thing Lay Still. I've had a lot of fun reviewing season one of Interview with a Vampire. Season two is gonna start up on May 12th, and I think I'm gonna give an episode by episode response as they release. So stay tuned for more Interview with the Vampire content coming to you. And if you want to review the book, Interview with a Vampire part two, you can go ahead and check Check out my Nevermore Notes Everything Interviews a Vampire Part 2 series right here. I've got all parts covered, but that one will get you primed and ready to go for the season 2 release. A couple of scenes I wanted to talk about in more detail. The conversation about Lestat and his flying powers, aka the cloud gift, was supremely confusing to me because all the way back in episode one, we see Louis and Lestat floating above the ground when they're having their moment together. So didn't Louis already know Lestat could fly? And by extension, didn't Daniel know that? There have been a couple of scenes so far in the series that show a lack of continuity and planning throughout the entirety of the series, a major failure of whoever was supposed to be doing the overall edits. There's a bunch of various scenes in 6 and 7 that compare Claudia and Lestat and acknowledge the two of them are much more similar than they would like. And this is something that they do in the book too that I thought was in some ways a clever callback. I love comparing Claudia to Lestat and comparing Claudia to Lewis within the book. This child nurture nature experimentation vampiric kind of thing going on that's really fun to parse and examine. But one thing that's notable to me is this version of Lestat is significant more cunning, conniving, and planning than any version of Book Lestat ever was. And it actually makes Claudia and Lestat a lot more similar than they were in the book. And for me that sort of removes some of the closeness that Louis and Claudia share because Louis is always asking her to like stop and think. She's taking that and making these cunning dark plots that are beyond Louis's capability, synthesizing the viciousness of Lestat and Louis's philosophical, thoughtful mode into like a third creature. But TV show Claudia is just very removed from Louis. The things the two of them seem to have in common is that they're both young vampires and they're both black and therefore face a certain degree of racism. And then Claudia probably receives a certain level of sexism or Louis receives a certain level of homophobia slash prejudice against them that it feels like Lestat either doesn't receive or is super removed from and therefore doesn't care. But other than the two of them lacking power and experiencing discrimination in a way that's unique from how Lestat experiences the world, they don't feel like they have a lot in common. I had a quick note wondering how we got the scene between Claudia and Lestat on the train. Like I guess Claudia could have told Louis that Lestat hunted her down the train and dragged her back, but specifically Lestat and Claudia have a conversation about Bruce aka Killer and what he did to her. It goes into more details than I thought Louis knew specifics on and it also reveals more details than I thought he wanted Daniel to know. They had this huge conversation in I think it was episode four or maybe episode five about how Louis didn't want to use Claudia and her trauma to sell books and she didn't want to be sensationalized or whatever and then he goes from being like angry and causing like tremors and stuff to being like yeah here's all the details it's fine now when Lestat blurts them out. And lastly for every area I feel like the show didn't really honor the book or get the spirit of the book correct. I do love Lestat's death scene here in the seventh episode. I think the fanfare they make about it, the ending together with Claudia, Louis, and Lestat just slowly watching him die, the voiceover of Anne Rice's words that describe the death even though they don't 100% fit with what we're seeing now, all of that was really great. The dramatic music, the camera angles, it was a vision and it was really very enjoyable to see. So let's move into those characters and relationships starting with Daniel. Credit where credit is due, Daniel at least recognizes an abusive relationship where apparently Louis and the showrunners do not. He isn't kind or compassionate about it and I don't think he really wants to help Louis, but he does want a truthful story and he recognizes that this one specific element can't possibly be truthful. Or at least it can't be the full context of the story, right? Like there can be what we would consider abusive relationships and with vampires it's not. Because when you have immortality 
be at your fingertips over time, I feel like even some of the worst and most violent acts can be atoned for or forgiven in some way, shape, or form. I don't really know, but I'm more open to accepting that view, but you have to like present it and tell me about it and give me that context for me to go there with you. Daniel also gets his first moment actually being a good reporter where he attacks Louis's premise that Lestat died that night in the Rue Royale. All of that was a great little moment, kind of overshadowed by the reveal of Armand, but I guess we'll get to that later. Moving into Claudia, she is even more my queen in this TV show than she was in the book. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's the only fucking sane character we've met to date. She refuses to forgive Lestat and recognizes him for the worm that he is. She tells Louis over and over again, if he forgives the attack and lets Lestat back in, Lestat will do this or worse again and again and again, and he'll know that he will always be forgiven. While I can sort of empathize with Louis wanting the two of them to reconcile, and I can empathize with the fact that Claudia is being quote unquote difficult about it, she's the only person taking the correct stance here. And if she cannot live with Louis and be separate from Lestat, then she must leave. When Louis says that her behavior towards Lestat is ugly, I love that she claps back, better ugly than blind. And she's so right. And also what's ugly about telling an abuser off, setting your own boundaries, and letting him know you're not buying it. That seems like being honest and truthful with that person, letting them know that they can't win you back, there's nothing they can do for it, and the only reason you're still here is because your friend is here and you're looking out for them. And I love at the end of episode 7 that Claudia is getting like her little 40 chest moment where she's outplaying Lestat in every way, because we know that somewhere along the lines in this show Claudia must die as she does in the book. She was incredibly savage and cunning in the book, but we never really get to see the full extent of that because she seems to be still coming into her own and finding a way to survive in the world. This show has sort of like rapidly induced that for her. So we get to see her at her pinnacle, her most cunning and diabolical, and having this really triumphant great moment before we know her inevitable end has to come. And I am personally seriously gonna miss Bailey Bass playing Claudia in season two. Don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for the new actress, I'm really excited to see her take on it, but this Claudia was devious and cunning and innocent and glorious in all the different ways I wanted to see a slightly aged up Claudia, and I am just gonna miss the new performance here. Moving into Armand, the reveal here is just weird and odd and off-putting to me. It's not that I was surprised by it, like the way this guy was talking and standing out from the background made me realize there was something going on with him. And the most obvious solution is that this is Armand and Louis and Armand are still in their like together phase. But just the fact that he is a vampire and they're trying to hide it from Daniel while also giving him like the full truth feels really weird and random and kind of pointless. And they go way out of their way to try and sell Armand as a human. Louis has a line where he says to Armand, You're in your 20s, do you think I'm squandering my gift? In reference to how Daniel lashed out at Louis when they first had their interview. And Armand doesn't really answer it, which makes sense because I can't imagine a vampire as old as him is able to like think about being in your 20s, let alone think about being in his 20s in modern times. <laughs> but it's a very interesting contrast if the intention for the show was really to tell the true and accurate story. To have a character concealing themselves, a character that it's kind of been implied is able to like wake people up or make them go to sleep, that's able to like forcibly calm Louis down when he goes into rages or make Louis forget or remember things differently. Inserting that character while you're supposed to be getting the unfiltered truth is confusing for me, quite honestly. And even though I don't trust Louis and the way he's recounting things, I trust Armand even less. And it makes me feel like maybe Armand is in some way, shape, or form manipulating him. And some of that's from like little snippets of offhanded things that he said throughout season one. And some of that is just because of who Armand is in the books. And I'm really excited to see where this goes in season two, because they've got to do something somewhere with this Armand character to explain it or make it make sense to me. So let's go back 
back to talking about Louis. One thing the book and the TV show have in common is that this Louis is just super unself-aware. That this TV show version of Louis believes he and Lestat could ever be equals despite their age difference, their knowledge base difference, their financial difference is crazy to me. He has done nothing to show that he and Lestat were equals within the entirety of the storytelling. Every time they turn around it seems to me that Lestat has always had a significant advantage over him. We saw what a big advantage Lestat had over Louis at the end of episode 5 when he like almost kills them. So to turn around here in episode 6 and claim that there was something in their relationship that was equal just feels gross and feels like more lies and like compensating than ever before. In some ways I sort of see Louis as like this milquetoast moderate trapped between the extremity of Lestat and Claudia. And to that end I think the show does a great job showing how someone cannot just sit on the fence. And I do still find this line that he says to Claudia that in a hundred years the two of them might be exactly like Lestat very interesting because I do find modern Louis to be quite similar in a lot of mannerisms to the Lestat we see in the TV show. He feels very cold and detached from things. He can have these very quick rapid mood shifts the way we see in Lestat. There's definitely a certain level of calculation and forethought going into his moves that we don't see in um, younger Louis' interactions. And of course I know this TV show version of Louis says he doesn't kill people anymore and also he seems really concerned about the fate of humanity and that's very different from how Lestat feels but all of the way he acts and interacts with the world is the same even if her goals might end up being separate. I really enjoy the way Louis sort of falls into like this love story with Lestat. They get some really cute moments at episode 7 before they kill Lestat off and that was enjoyable. It's probably the first time we get to see Louis fall in love and be in love with Lestat. I feel like it was probably fan service for the showrunners long-standing claims that they would be a love story here. We're finally getting a little picture of it and this little window we're seeing is supposedly all false and distracting. That's an interesting layer to finally be giving the right visual and aesthetic when you're not giving the right underlying emotional beats. Which moves me into the list at. Do we buy that he left the house out of a quote-unquote profound sense of shame? And if we do buy that, is that okay as a response? Because arguably Lestat leaving means that Louis and Claudia are defenseless for months on end left to their own devices. I don't know, I guess I don't buy the profound sense of shame. Lestat to this point hasn't struck me as a character capable of shame. It's one of the few things it feels like he and his book counterpart have in common. And certainly the close-up we get of him at the end of episode 5 does not look like shame. So what happened between 5 and 6? Where was that emotional transformation for Lestat? We finally get Lestat's turning backstory. It's quite similar to his backstory in the books, although it is a little bit longer and more torturous for him in the TV show versus the book. There are several moments in the show that seem to be trying to drive sympathy for Lestat, and there are elements about his situation that are untenable and that could help drive empathy and compassion for him. However, I feel like he lost me when he beat the tar out of Louis, and six years is not long enough to make that all is forgiven kind of scenario. Not even like this sad sob story about his turning can really do that for me. But one thing Lestat's turning does do is it gives a little sneak peek into his determination to survive and to have things come out his way. Because from this terrified, clueless state, he clawed his way into being rich and powerful and determined to just do what he wanted when he wanted. So then let's close by looking at Antoinette. She wants Lestat for herself for some reason. He clearly prefers Louis to her and only goes to her when Louis is unavailable either emotionally or because of Claudia or some other reason. And Lestat is also obviously very abusive to her. He cut off her finger, but when they're in bed together and she starts to suggest something that doesn't interest Lestat, he gets physical with her and has 
often gotten physical with her, you can tell by the way she fawns over him, sort of appeases him to get it to stop. It feels like this Antoinette is even less of a character than her book counterpart was, where the boy there was uh, sensitive and quiet, not really 100% aware of what was happening, and he pops up again later in the Vampire Chronicles and gets a little bit more personality then as well. Uh, this Antoinette is fame hungry and seems to want attention and doesn't care what kind of attention it is, but like what motivates her, what drives her, all of these factors seem to be washed out in favor of her being a mindless minion to Lestat. It seems like it would have made a lot more sense for her to team up with Louis and Claudia. Like, if she wants Lestat for some unknown reason and they don't want him, why aren't they working together to make this split happen the way they all desire it? Or if she wants to get away from Lestat so she can do her New York trip and they want to get away from Lestat so they can do their Europe trip, why aren't the three of them coming together to destroy Lestat? Like, by the time we get the Antoinette reveal at the end of episode 7, all of my sympathy is gone for her. And I was just like, oh, this stupid bitch deserves to die this way. So moving into some thematic elements. For episode 6, Louis tells us the theme of this episode is, are we the sum of our worst moments? And can we be forgiven if we do not forgive ourselves? I have a lot of biases going into this kind of thematic element, so let's just lay that on the table before we start picking apart these questions. We're not the sum of our worst moments, but that doesn't mean that other people can't treat us like we are. If you do something horrible to someone else, they do not have to grant you clemency because it was an accident or because it was one bad day or whatever the argument is here. Yes, you can be forgiven even if you don't forgive. And no, that's not hypocritical. To me, forgiveness is a personal and nuanced act. What a person does, whether that person is remorseful, what their atonement is, it all has to balance out against the wrong that they committed and it has to do it to the person who the wrong was committed to. I'd also say that forgiving indiscriminately can be equally dangerous slash invalidating of other people's forgiveness to you. Because like if someone actually did the work to be forgiven and the other person did the work to get to a place of forgiveness and you just go around granting forgiveness indiscriminately, that is also equally flippant and hypocritical in some ways, at least to me. And as one further side tangent, forgiveness is not necessary for one to move on, nor is there ever a time that someone is entitled to forgiveness. So knowing those are all my personal opinions on this kind of like, please forgive sort of jargon, you can probably get that I'm not buying or into the situation happening here in episode 6. And I lean heavily against the narrative that Louis is trying to portray. For me, there's not any context that an hour-long episode could give me that would justify what we witnessed in episode 5, at least not within six years of him begging for forgiveness. In fact, they forgive Lestat and provide conditions for their reunion, and Lestat immediately breaches those conditions and then tries to hold Claudia hostage in their relationship. So that says to me, you definitely shouldn't have forgiven him. You definitely should judge him by his worst moments, and if you don't judge him by that one moment, you can judge him by these other bad moments he's having over here. And considering the thing that gets Louis to respond to Lestat is an album of Antoinette singing Come To Me that Lestat orchestrated, it makes me wonder if the two of them are both just bad guys. Instead of Lestat's love appealing to his higher angels or bringing out the best in him, Lestat and Louis's relationship brings out the worst in Louis and makes them both worse people. Are we meant to believe that Louis's anger and jealousy is endearing? Are we meant to conclude that both these men are horrible? Is this in some way supposed to imply that Louis has done equally horrible things to Lestat by ignoring him? And that moves us into the theming of domestic violence that definitely continues here in episode 6 and 7 with Lestat's general manipulation and forcing people into scenarios they don't want to be in. You know, I kind of find it distasteful the way all of this is portrayed in the show, and I do think they could have had their cake and eaten it too. As I've said at the top, they could have set up a scenario where for vampires, the long eternal lifespan means that you get a chance at atoning for everything and makes this moment of violence okay in the grand scheme of things, but it certainly would not have made it okay at this juncture in the story where Louis would like to forgive Lestat. 
maybe if they're talking about how it wasn't okay then, but at this juncture, some of the edges of that had been softened over for Louis would have been better. I just needed something else here. And because we didn't do it that way, and the portrayal we got happens over this short, small time span where both Louis and Claudia are still acting predominantly human versus vampiric, personally felt like the depiction was really shallow and wasn't exploring a lot and ended up being kind of like meaningless and actually portraying things that are bad for people in general. So moving into some themes of homophobia and racism, optically the Lestat Antoinette relationship is very difficult for me in these two episodes because his refuge from his homosexual black family is a white lady where he can pretend to be straight with her, where he would need to reconcile and grovel and atone to Claudia and Louis for the way he's treated them. He can just go to Antoinette and have her fawn all over him while he is violent and aggressive with her for no particular reason. And it's really telling to me that Lestat can just choose to walk away from all this otherness. It puts some of his comments about how they're choosing to be discriminated against into a more negative light. And Lestat just point blank refuses to engage with certain kinds of struggles. It hits really different when Claudia keeps repeating we are his slaves in her head to Louis, considering both of them are black and Lestat is white and he does seem to be holding them against their will and doing whatever he pleases with Antoinette on the side. These last two episodes were perhaps the most rich in implication. It sort of reminded me of how much people often hate to be called racist or homophobic or whatever the buzzword of the day is. They want to engage with that as an insult, but they never want to engage with the act or the mentality or their word choicing that brought on the accusation. And the truth of the matter is, is if you're in a position where you can just be offended that someone called you racist or be offended that someone called you homophobic, you do have the privilege to just walk away from the conversation and the accusation entirely unfazed. And we see this with Lestat, especially in these last two episodes. So let's take a moment and look at the whole of season one. To me, this is fine as an AU interview with the vampire retelling. But does it remain true to the Vampire Chronicles characters? I'm gonna have to give a hard no on this. Both the characters and the themes displayed in Vampire Chronicles I just don't see represented very well here in this show, which is fine. I have no problem with that. My only issue is that the showrunners said that they were gonna keep the spirit of the Vampire Chronicles, the spirit of these characters intact, and as far as I'm concerned they didn't. Does this depict a grand romantic relationship between Louis and Lestat? Not for my money. Louis never even admits that he loves Lestat, or if he does it's like once. They have very few moments of like hand holding or tenderness or anything like that. The closest we get is probably in episode 7 during the Mardi Gras theme stuff. And even that, the layer underneath is that Louis is doing this as a distraction and a deception. So that sort of like hurts the visual on screen. And I'm still struggling with what the vampire means here. Like is the vampire a metaphor for freedom? Is the vampire a metaphor for outcasts and embracing every element of who they are. It seems to me that for at least Louis, being a vampire is a state of shame and restraint. Just as a lot of his relationships mirror this cold restraint, like he is holding himself separate from Lestat even after establishing the two of them are a couple. He's also like holding himself back from killing humans and only choosing to eat animals. Um, not giving into whatever that core nature or desire is within himself. And it seems like whether we're talking about who Louis loves or what Louis eats. He views this through the lens of the vampire and he views all of these things as equally monstrous. So like to me, him becoming a vampire has actually further alienated him from his sexuality instead of like freeing him and liberating him. And maybe we'll see some changes in that when we get to see his and Armand's relationship, but as of right now it seems like becoming a vampire was a supreme tragedy for him. I guess it's technically fairly book accurate, although its depiction is a little bit strange in 
the TV show. Honestly, I just think the show is at its best when it's doing its own thing and it's not trying to call back to specific scenes or plot points that you would find in the original book. Things are most awkward, forced, or confusing when they're harkening back to the exact plot points of the book. These new characters wouldn't have done that way. Or when they're trying to take scenes that had strong implication and meaning in the book and shoving them in for these characters to sort of pantomime around. So overall, I think that this was a pretty cool show. I'm really excited to see what happens in season two. Them going to Europe means they're going to be going during World War II, and I'm curious to see a World War II version of them hunting for vampires. Uh, do they run into the theater earlier or later? Paris is occupied right now, so that's gotta entirely change the theme and vibe of being in Paris. I don't know. I can't do anything but speculate at this juncture, but I'm really excited to see what they do and where they go. I've got so many questions at the end of season one. I just need some of them to have answers in season two. But talk to me. What are your thoughts about season one interview with a vampire, and what are you most looking forward to in season two? Let me know in those comments down below. And as always, keep reading.